He has the law. Yes, he has the law. He has conviction. He has knowledge of sin. And he has this inability to live that thing out. Because he needs something that he's missing. <laughs>
under the power of carnality, which yes. is lust of the flesh, pride of life, lust of the eyes, the pride, pride of, of life. life right. Yeah. So that is that you are propelled forward by this desire that rises up within you, which is, as we've seen previously, sin. And it manifests itself in a spirit of disobedience and a seared conscience, a, 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 a guilty conscience because you're constantly falling short of the expectations that god has for you whether you see it in a codified law or, not, or just in, in your, your heart. heart so paul's talking about this experience this kind of a person but then he's going to make this distinction this contrast between that person and you yes and this is a really yes. good distinction because whether it you, you are uh, it, whether you are in sin or free from sin there is still a sense of this lingering experience in your life but Paul's saying, though, even though that you might ha be having this experience, that's not who you are anymore. That's right. That's why he begins at the very beginning. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. And the reason why he's so excited about the no condemnation is because prior to in 724, he has concluded, given the situation he uh, summarizes in seven. We've already done that in mm -hmm. chapter seven. Look at verse 24. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of? death and you see that matches up with ephesians chapter 2 so this is a person who's walking in the trespasses and sins of their disobedience because they don't have the mind the right heart aka the experience that paul is saying in romans chapter 7 again yeah. highlighting to our last what was it two episodes yeah. or so that this person is not a reborn christian this is not yeah. a spirit filled individual this is a person who's still under the condemnation of the law yes and this person is crying out how can I stop this? How can I be delivered yes. from this experience? And the answer is, thanks be to God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, verse 25. And then he does this summary of what has happened. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. And th again, this is the experience of Romans chapter 7. This is a man who has actually come into the knowledge of what the law is truly for. So in his mind, as a Jew, mm -hmm. as an Israelite, he wants and serves the law of God. But he also recognizes that with his flesh, he serves the law of the spirit. Right. He's a summary. In other words, he is if, if there's a possible way to characterize like this, he's going from this sinful state to this transitional period of being now spirit born. Yes. That's what and that last verse. That's is, what that is, last is, verse is uh, 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 highlighting. Yeah, it's highlighting. It's uh, if you want to academic theological ease, it's the liminal stage. It's okay. The stage there, of liminality. There Some you of y'all know what I'm talking about, but that's what that is. So. Verse eight, he comes to this thing and watch this. OK, remember. You have a human who is three things, body, soul, soul spirit. spirit. Now, what happens when you come into Christ, you're baptized into his death, and you're resurrected into his life? You only have life via the spirit. Hmm. That's why Jesus Christ, when he comes into that room with the disciples, he breathes, breathes on them. This is imagery of him breathing life back into Adam, yeah. which is humanity. This is their rebirth experience. This is the rebirth experience. This is him talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Mm -hmm. You must be born again through water and spirit. Spirit. This yeah. is him talking to the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Mm -hmm. You will worship in spirit, spirit and truth. in truth. Yeah. So the spirit is the life-giving power. And in Romans chapter 7, you have a man who doesn't have, have that experience. the spirit, mm -mm. although he has the law. Yes, he has the law. He has conviction. He has knowledge of sin. And he has this inability to live that thing out. Because he needs something that he's missing. So this is why it says there is therefore now no condemnation. He's drawing this contrast between this Roman 7 dude and this mm -hmm. other possible way of living life. And that's living life in the spirit. There. So what happens is that when you receive the spirit, you then say, I am going to live my life according to the truth of what the spirit is revealing within me mm. and the spirit is revealing all the words that jesus christ taught you, you read john 13 13 through 17 and it's this beautiful exposition beginning with um the last supper in john 13 to john 17 which is this prayer for his disciples it's commonly known as the high priestly prayer mm -hmm. where he the, the actual lord's prayer in that moment yeah right it's the, the actual Lord, Lord actually, actually praying, praying <laughs> where he's actually drawing on 
he's telling the disciples, if I go, it's going to be a great benefit to you because the spirit is going to come. Yeah. And that's kind of crazy because there's Jesus in the flesh. And when we think about it, it's like, what would we rather have? And I think most of us at least initially think, man, yeah, having Jesus right here, walking yeah. and talking and hanging out with him, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Jesus says there's a better thing. Why? Because the spirit is actually going to be within you. Yeah. Right. He's going to be in your mind. This is why then language like this, that uh, second Corinthians, uh, is it two or first Corinthians two? That um, we have this mind, let the mind of Christ, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Well, that let this by me and you. That's Philippians uh, chapter two, five through eleven. Okay, but that no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of that passage is we have, uh, right? Because we have. I think it's the mind of Christ. I, mean, I might be mistaking that. But Philippians two actually tells us, let this mind be in you, not that might be yours in Christ Jesus, yeah. or let this mind be in you that could be yours in Christ Jesus, but let this mind abide in you that is actually yours in Christ Jesus, yeah. right? So it's ours. That thing is settled, and the spirit within us cries out, Abba, Father, right? Mm. So now we have a spirit of obedience by faith. We have a mind that is being renewed and a body who is not leading the way but a spirit that is animating towards life and will, ex oh, well, we still have a minute. So I want to <laughs> read this. Let me read this so Go you see it. this, right? We'll just read it. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh, that's Romans 7, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. What right here? What is what's going on? Paul is determining that sin has been condemned in the very body of Jesus. And the condemnation of sin and bringing it to death is not something that the law itself could do. Mm. All that the law could do was condemn you for breaking it. But it could, could, could not put it. It to couldn't death. actually put it to death. Yeah. But God has put it to death so that we might live through a whole nother way. Mm. There you go. That's 10 minutes. We'll see you guys in the next. Yeah, stay tuned to part B of this, part two, because this was necessary of a two-parter. So uh, stick with us and we'll get right into it.